Hi you guys! Today I'm going to show you how to check your Gmail's login history. The only way to do this is to check on your desktop, so I'll be showing you only on the desktop. Have that device on hand if you can so you can follow along. Let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is check um, our account's login history. And um, So to do this, we're going to launch our Gmail and log in. And then once we're here, we're going to go up to the top right and click on the settings icon. This is going to bring down a list um, and we'll, in, under quick settings, we want to go to see all settings. And then beneath the settings here, we're going to have a bunch of different categories. We want to go to accounts and import and then scroll down to the bottom. So in the bottom right corner of this page, we're gonna find the last account activity and then a time four minutes ago. And beneath this, we're gonna have the details option here, which we're going to click on. So now we have this, um, the activity pulled up here and we can go through all of it. So the access type on the very left-hand side, sometimes it'll tell you exactly what it was. So. A Chrome, I was logged in. This would have been the most recent time. This was right now I logged in. And then beneath this, you'll see the authorized application. And so this, what this normally means is it's an app of some sort. So uh, Google Chrome, or if you don't know, you can always look, click the show details. It's going to give you more information on it. So iPhone, email, iOS, iOS version, um, the domain name. So this is obviously me i can recognize you know the iphone type i was just logged into my email hey if you're finding this video helpful hit that like button and subscribe to our channel this helps the channel to grow and for us to reach a larger audience thanks again and let's get back to the video and sometimes they don't show the details and I, i'm not sure what the reason is but always look at the ip address as you can see all of these ip addresses match which means these are all me um you can look at the date and time so yeah, so if you're ever unsure about what authorized application was used or what browser, you can always rely on the IP address um, and go through. And if they all match and it's all your IP address, then you're probably in the clear. However, if there is an IP address that you do not trust or don't know, you can look up that IP address online. So for example, if one of these IP addresses I didn't recognize, I could simply select this you can look up your IP address through a bunch of different websites. All you'll do is paste it in here and you'll search up that IP address. It's going to bring up all the information that it can on this IP address. Um, and if this matches your IP address or you recognize this location, then you're in the clear. Otherwise, if you don't, you should reset your Gmail password right away. This is also going to be really helpful having the IP address. So if it was an IP address you didn't recognize, then you kind of have an idea of where this person is that's gotten your login information. Especially if it's a smaller location, you can maybe pinpoint who and where they are. And however, it is very easy for people to change their IP addresses, so you can't fully rely on it. But it's a start and it is going to be helpful to at least identify the problem before it becomes one. So now you know how to check your login history, you know how to see which IP addresses have been used to log in, and if, for example, you did run into trouble and you're now identifying somebody um, with a different IP address trying to log in or maybe has successfully logged in, the next step is going to be taking some more security measures and safety precautions. The first one being changing your Gmail password. And the second one is going to be a really easy step to take. So once you're logged into your Gmail, you're gonna go back into the settings like we were. And here is where you're going to have a few different options under the change account settings. You have the change password option right away. Um, and if you haven't done that already, you'll do this. So the first thing you'll have to do is verify that it's you and you'll type in your previous password. Next. And then it's going to give you the option to create a new password. It's super easy. You're just going to type in your new password and then confirm the new password and then you can change it. Beneath this is the change password and recovery options. So this is a really helpful page to know about. You have a bunch of security tips that you can review. If we click on this, 
just gonna do a quick security checkup for us. So it's gonna let us know our devices. Um, it's gonna give us the option to remove the devices if we wanted to, um, simply by clicking remove, safe browsing. Um, you can turn on enhanced safe browsing for your account. This is just going to protect um, your account against any dangerous websites, downloads and extensions when you're signed in. Um, it's just essentially gonna help improve security for you. And to do this, you're just going to hit continue and you can turn that on. And then beneath this, you have your recent security activity. This is for, um, from the last month or 28 days. Um, and you can just look through and see all of the activity. So where you were signed in. Um, and if you saw any unfamiliar activity, it's just going to let um, immediately let you change your password. There's the sign in and recovery option here. And this is just the two-step verification. So you can go to a, a Google sign in prompt on um, whatever devices are connected. So for me, it's my phone, my iPad, my um, phone number as well. So I can get a text message. And then your third party connections. Um, this is just going to review everything else that's uh, connected to your Google account. Um, so if you, wanted to remove access to any of these, this is where you would do that. This is everything that has access to my Google account. And maybe if you saw unfamiliar activity on one of those, this would a good idea would be to remove it. And then your saved passwords. You can go to a password checkup as well. So it's going to tell you how many saved passwords you have. For me, 36 sites and apps. After you go through this, you can go to other Google account settings as well. And here is a whole nother uh, privacy and personalization you can go through. You have a bunch of different things that you can do here. Privacy and personalization, so you can manage your data and privacy. We just did the security checkup. Beneath that, you have privacy suggestions available to you. And so if we click on this first one here, we have um, three suggestions for privacy. We can set up auto delete. So this is just going to automatically delete web and app activity. And if I wanted that on, I could set up auto delete. And then next, automatic, automatically delete YouTube history. You can set up auto delete for that as well. And make a plan for your account. So inactive account manager is basically going to plan what happens to your data if you stop using your account. So this is going to be very helpful as well. So I've reviewed those suggestions and I can either turn those on if I wanted to. Below this, I can review key privacy settings as well. So if, for example, I did want to set these up, it's just going to, it's going to be super simple. I'm just going to follow the prompts. So if I wanted to set up auto delete on web and activity, um, it's going to bring me to this page and it's going to just give me a couple options here so I can choose an auto delete activity for older um, older than 18 months, 3 months, 36 months. I can go all the way up to 36 months. And once I have that selected, I'll go next. And I can preview all of the examples of what it's going to be deleting and then I can confirm that. Now my preference is saved and I'll hit done. And then I can also set this up for YouTube as well if I wanted to. All right, that's it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you found this helpful. Maybe you can use this information or pass it on to somebody else who needs it. Thanks again. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.